So, we continue with our lecture series and we have already completed 4 lectures. The first one giving an idea of what is vector addition and scalar multiplication. In the second one and third one working on the structure of R2 and R3 in some detail. Maybe the sort of details that we want to recall every now and then because our model for a vector space is R3 and we start off from there and then develop abstract ideas. And in the fourth lecture we introduce what linear spaces are, introduce the definition and then a number of examples other than R2 and R3 or Rn were considered and in fact very abstract uh, examples were looked at. We will be using many of them every now and then in our lectures. Now the next stage is to explore the linear space deeper. That means we are slowly entering the inside of the linear spaces trying to see what inner structures are there. And one observes from the examples that there are several linear spaces lying inside a given linear space. Now, these are generally called subspaces. So, we come to that before that we look at R3 again. So, to get a feel for what exactly it is. So, we consider R3. Now, I am fond of drawing pictures. So, this is a sub coordinate system that you have the usual coordinate system that we introduce. Now, you know we have if you choose a non-zero vector and take the scalar multiples of that we generate a whole line. So, we call this V the vector V and then this line which of course passes through the origin or the set of points in R3 generated by the vector V is given by because V not equal to 0 we have x equal to T V this is a collection of points in R3 this collection of points actually form a line passing through the origin and you can easily verify that forget about the rest of the things the if you introduce the same addition that you have in R3 on this and also the same concept of scalar multiplication in R3 as you have uh, in as in R3 on this subset then you see that this subset is closed with respect to addition and is also scalar multiple of any vector in this class is again a vector in this class. The 0 vector is there which turns out to be what is called the identity element and then for a given vector there is a there is a, a given vector v you have minus v which forms what is called the additive inverse of the given vector and so on you can check that all the properties of a vector space or all the axioms of a vector space are satisfied by the objects that lie on this line. Okay. So, in fact every line passing through the origin is of this form for some choice of some non-zero vector v. Okay. So, they are all vector spaces in their own right with the same addition and scalar multiplication that you have in R3. And these are being subsets of R3, we say they are subspaces of R3. Yet another set of subspaces that you encounter is this, you take two vectors which are not along the same line, two non-zero vectors which are not along the same line, say u and v. 
Now look at the set of vectors of the form. These are again a set of points in R3. Now, recalling the explorations that we did earlier, you see that this is a plane generated by the two vectors u and v. I have made an assumption that u is not a multiple of v. So, this determines a plane and that plane passes through the origin. Now, one thing that you observe is that if you take any two vectors lying in this plane, you add them up, you get another vector in the plane in and also about the scalar multiples. So, once again you can show that it has all the properties of a vector space in its own right with the same addition and scalar multiplication. Okay. So, this is also an example of a subspace. Now, since my choice of u and v is arbitrary, you see that in fact, we have already seen it that any plane passing through the origin can be put in the form with an appropriate choice of u and v and that forms a vector space and this is a subspace. So, these are the two distinctive subspaces of R3. Then of course, trivially the 0 vector, if you take the, the 0 vector in R3, this itself is a vector space, it has all the properties of a vector space. And then of course, the whole space R3 is a subspace. So, there are 4 different types of subspaces, the whole space, the 0 vector, then all the planes passing through the origin, all the lines passing through the origin, they are all subspaces. Okay. This is the general concept of a subspace. Now, in the general scenario, we will have to define what a subspace is and then you know explore the space. So, for that we, so we start with the vector space V. So, it is V over F actually, we will simply write because F V hold fixed, so V, v take as the vector space. Now, we define what a subspace is, a subset U of V is u plus v belongs to u for every That is u plus v belongs to u for every u and v belonging to u and alpha u belongs to u for every alpha belonging to f and for every u belonging to u. If u has this set of properties, then you say u is a subspace of v. So, then you can see that this is this has all the required properties and in, 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 in fact, it is a small exercise to prove that 0 belongs to it. Okay. And if u is there, then minus u is there. I mean, they are all obviously you can use this left and right and then get the all the results proved. 
and prove that this itself is a vector space and it is a subset of vector space. So, this is the definition of a subspace and the sets that we have explored in R3 satisfy these conditions. Now, something non trivial, some non trivial example we look at, we call the PF the space of all polynomials over the field F. Now, you know that this forms a vector space with the usual addition of polynomials and scalar multiplication of polynomials. Okay. So, V is a vector space. Now, consider P n as the sub collection V consisting of all polynomials of degree less than or equal to n including 0 polynomial. Then u is of v and we cannot say anything more at this stage because we, we do not have the machinery to talk about them. So, it is a subspace, it is a subset. If you take two polynomials of degree n or degree less than or equal to n and add you get a polynomial of the same class. Okay. So, also about the scalar multiplication, 0 polynomial is there for every polynomial an inverse element is there. Then all other axioms of the vector space are satisfied by these objects. Therefore, it is a subspace of P. So, now you see n can take any integral value. So, n ranging from so there are several subspaces that you have. Okay. So, you see that within the structure the, the space will hold several subsets which have which are again vector spaces in their own right. Now, this is a very important thing about vector spaces. Now, there is there are other examples like I use this an abuse of notation, but sometimes all Riemann integrable functions is also denoted by this or if you want I you can use just R. R real valued functions over Now, with usual addition of functions, okay, so these are real valued functions defined from and you have addition and 
scalar multiplication defined in the usual way. So, it forms a vector space over R. Consider C A B which consists of all real valued functions on A B with the additional condition that they are continuous functions. Okay. So, C A B consists of all continuous this again of course it you uses a result in analysis namely that sum of continuous functions is a continuous function scalar multiple of a continuous function is continuous these two results are used and once you use that this and they are certainly of this class. So, this is a proper subset of R A B and this forms a vector space in its own right and this is an example of a of a subspace. Now, there are innumerable examples that you can construct in fact, I will give a chain of uh, examples on sequences. So, if you take real sequences, I will explain the notation. <coughs> okay. C not not stands for all sequences of real numbers with all but finitely many 0. Okay. C naught consists of all real numbers sequence of real numbers which converges to 0. C consists of all convergent sequences, M consists of all bounded sequences, S consists of all sequences. Okay. Now, this is a vector space, this is a vector space, but this is a proper subspace of S, this is a convergent sequences or bounded sequences that, that is one of the results that you prove. Okay. Then you have all sequences that converge to 0, they also form a vector space, then these are all sequences where the tail is always 0. Okay. So, this is, a, this is an example of a chain of subspaces that you have for S. And similarly, you can work something out on these, these uh, functions also, as you can start talking about functions with compact support and then functions which vanish at the end points. Okay. And then the functions that are just continuous, I am now talking about continuous functions only, continuous functions, then bounded functions and then just real valued functions. So, you can have a corresponding chain for functions also, okay. general vector space. So, V over F we have, so we define a operational thing namely what is called what we, what we mean by linear combinations. Okay. So, we define the following that a linear combination of vectors where V I V case are 
vectors in V and now note that only finite sum makes sense here that is a very important point to note because we are working in a vector space and we have a concept of addition of vectors we have a concept of multiplication by a scalar and then you know new vectors are generated by multiplying by scalars then you can add them you can add a pair of them you can extend this sum to a finite sum but beyond that you cannot do anything because we do not have the machinery at the moment because if you talk about an infinite sum then immediately the question arises what, what do you mean by that okay. to give a meaning to this we need some kind of a convergence concept which demands additional machinery on the space which we do not have so purely staying within the algebraic realm you cannot work on that in fact you will have to bring in the con convergence concept which means you will have to necessarily inter introduce little bit of analysis or uh, what is called uh, a topological concepts will have to be brought in. So, that we do not do, we do not have any intention to do it at the moment and nor at any stage in this lecture. Okay. So, we will confine ourselves purely to linear algebra. So, whenever we talk about a linear combination it means a finite sum. Okay. Therefore, there is no ambiguity about this at all the finite sum. So, if you know if you are taking a n number of vectors and then you can write sigma k equal to 1 to n and so on. Okay. So, this is a linear combination. We start with some non empty set of V. a non empty subset of V. Now, we define a class of vectors generated from S by taking linear combinations. Okay. So, take the linear combination of combinations of vectors in S. So, we have we denote this by S. S consists of all vectors V equal to These are all various finite sums, does not mean that it is a fixed number of elements that you choose. Okay. So, you take linear combination of vectors in S, that is can prove that this forms a vector space and you know that this is a sub collection of V and it is an exercise to show that this has all the properties of a vector space to take these elements and this is a subspace. So, this is a subspace generated by this non empty collection and which we denote by bracket S yes, or it is called the linear manifold of the vectors S yes, or linear manifold generated by the vectors S. Yes. In fact, this is exactly what we have seen here. See, we started with two vectors u and v, and then, then we made the, all the linear combinations of this. So, we generated a whole plane. 
okay. Here you started with a non-zero vector and then went on to look at the scalar multiples of that. So, this is again a linear manifold generated by the vector v. Okay. So, these are all examples of that. So, this is one way in which you can generate various subspaces. Take some collection of, of uh, elements from the vector space and then take all possible linear combinations, put them together, it will form a vector space. Okay. Now, the next question, okay, you have several vector spaces embedded or uh, not embedded is actually inside a given vector space. Now, so you naturally ask, suppose you take, the, you apply the set theoretic operations like take the union and intersection. So, we ask questions like given u1 and u2 of v what can one u1 union u2 let us explore this problem take this so you have you take r3 let us take u as u1 as a plane passing through the origin and u2 as some line passing through the origin okay what about their union their union cannot be a vector space in general because you can choose a vector in the plane you can choose a vector on the line such that their sum does not fall into either okay so it's it's immediately possible to construct an example where this fails or just go to r2 even in r2 you take two lines passing through the origin which are not identical they are subspaces now you take a vector here a vector in this and take a vector here and then combine them and you know that the addition of vectors is through parallelogram law. So, what you do is you complete the parallelogram and then you see that the sum of these two vectors is not a vector that lies either in u or, or u1 or in u2. Okay? So, this is quite easy to construct an example where a statement like u1 u2 are subspace then u1 union u2 is a is a vector space but is there any situation where it happens this also we go back to our example see every time in developing mathematics it comes from examples so you have to go to the examples and see what happens and then tries to conjecture and then try to prove that is the procedure let us explore this now you see that there are situations where po possibly the union becomes a vector space. When does that happen? Suppose the chosen line in this plane, you choose another line here and that line happens to lie inside this plane. Then you see their union is going to be the plane itself when it is a vector space. So, there are situations where it happens. Okay? So, which possibly uh, makes us to conjecture that u1 union u2 is a vector space. The first statement will be u1 union u2 is a vector space whenever u1 is contained in u2 or u2 is contained in u1. Okay? But that is only one side of the story. The other side of the story is strengthening this result. Can you say that this is the only situation where u1 union u2 is a vector space? 
okay so that is one question let us before we address that problem we will look at this now u1 intersection u2 can be explored I mean, that is quite easy you take two planes passing through the origin in r3 go by going back to the examples and then you see that they are intersection if they are not identical if they are identical then it is the whole plane if they are distinct then the intersection is going to be a line a line passing through the origin and a line passing through the origin is indeed a vector space. So, in general you can easily prove that intersection of vector spaces or intersection of subspaces is again a subspace. I mean this you can stretch even to arbitrary intersection not necessarily finite intersection. Okay? So, that is done that I leave the details to you, but let us spend some time on this u1 union u2 maybe just to point out some aspects of proving something. Okay. So, our conjecture is this is at this stage is a conjecture one side is simple probably if and only if u1 is contained in u2 or u1 okay this needs a proof okay it's not just feeling on one example is not the last word on mathematics so you need a proof you have to give a proof for that okay one part of this is very simple suppose u1 is contained in u2 okay let us assume u1 is contained in u2 then what is u1 union u2 it is actually u2 which is a vector space and or if you assume this then it is the other way around that u1 union u2 is u1 therefore it is a vector space so one side is rather trivial but the other side is not that trivial okay what you are asserting is this u1 union this is the part that we are trying to prove okay let us go into proving this kind of things what techniques we can use okay quite often it is not easy to prove this way okay so you have the general principle that if you want to prove p implies q then it is equivalent to proving that not not q implies not p ok let us see why it works take a universal set now you take a collection of objects which satisfies the condition p we denote by p ok then the suppose p is implies q and, and in the same way suppose capital Q is, is uh, the set where consisting of all objects which satisfies small q then this is the scenario that you have ok. Now what do you mean by not p? Not p is this collection this set the complement of p ok on this I think this is not the same as u that I am using there. Okay. <coughs> now, not q is this collection. So, this is equivalent to the statement that not that is q complement is contained in 
Q complement is what? This one. Q complement is contained in P complement. Okay. So that is how it comes. So we use this sort to this one. I, I, I think I know it is quite trivial, but possibly I thought because it is to the students. So naturally they, they should learn the art of proving little things. Now how do you work on this? So the strategy is that we, we negate this. Okay? It leads to a negation of this. That is what we are trying to work on. Okay? So when you negate this, what is the negation that you have? u1 not contained in u2 and u2 is not contained in u1. So, it is you have a scenario like this, u2 is not contained in u1, u1 is not contained in u2, which allows you to pick two vectors, one in u1 but not in u2, another one in u2 but not in u1. And then look at this kind of situation, okay? Right? Then look at the sum of this. So suppose I call this small u1 and call this small u2. Now I look at this one. U2. <coughs> okay? So, what about what is our claim? Our claim is that u1 plus u2 is not in the union. Okay? So, if u1 plus u2 is in the union, what happens? u1 is in u1, and u1 plus u2 is in the union okay therefore what can you say about u2 u2 is also going to be okay similarly the other way around therefore which is not true therefore you have u1 plus so you get uh, u u1 plus u2 does not belong to So, we have succeeded in constructing a vector. This is exactly what we did here. Yeah, in this one, took a u1, took a u2, and then this is u1 union u2, and this is u1 plus u2 is here, which is not that. Okay? So, that is the strategy. So, that is some a, a digression to uh, help you to tell you how you prove these kind of results. So, another way of getting subspaces is by taking the sum of subspaces. So, suppose u1 is contained in B, u2 is contained in B. Now, you write Now one can prove that this is a in fact suppose you have several subspaces u1 u2 forms a 
vector space. Now, these are new ways of constructing subspaces. So, once you have some subspaces, then from that you can add these vector spaces and construct subspaces. And I think I have succeeded in giving you a, a, a an account of what subspaces are, probably working on concrete examples and exploring them will give a deeper idea. Thank you very much.